Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, I'd encourage you to go to CNA TV and check out the previous six episodes. Um, that way you're ha you have all of the available information on this topic up to this point. In this episode, we are going to start a conversation about advocating for your profession. And we're going to, over the course of these next three episodes, we're going to talk about advocating from your, for your profession from three perspectives. We're going to talk about it in terms of advocating for, for poten with potential nursing assistants. Then we're going to talk about advocating with your peers or your colleagues, your coworkers. And then finally, we're going to talk about advocating for your profession with the other departments in the healthcare setting. So before we dive deep into the content of today, let's take a moment and look at some facts. Turnover ranges from 54% in a very conservative estimate up to 200%. The healthcare sector is projected to grow by 18% between now and 2026. Also, the, the CNA job projection for growth is 11%. So that's a pretty big number. Also, it's important to think about the fact that we are currently estimated to be about 300,000 positions short in order to meet our current demand for our nation's frail and elder citizens. It's also worth noting that the national average wage for a nursing assistant, hourly wage for a nursing assistant, is $13.23. And in some areas, that isn't necessarily a living wage. When we think about um, this, I, I presented you the facts, those facts for this reason. Nobody knows better than you how those facts translate than you do at your center, in your care setting, in the place where you work. If you're like some nursing assistants, you probably find yourself saying, man, I am so tired of working staff challenged or short. You might even find yourself asking the question, when are they going to get us some decent help in here? It's really unfair to our residents not to have enough people to provide quality care. Those are all very valid points. The truth of the matter is, though, that Recruiting and retention is a shared responsibility. Everybody in your care setting has a responsibility in that process. And what I really want to do is I really want to take the opportunity to speak specifically to your potential role as an advocate for your profession. Have you ever been at, say, your local department store and you're standing in line and you're in your scrubs? And someone walks up to you and says, hey, are you a nurse? And you say, I'm a CNA. And they say, oh. One of the challenges that we have to overcome is the public perception of the noble and humanitarian work that you do as the first line of care. And that starts with you. That starts with CNAs. So if someone says, are you a CNA? You might say, I'm just a CNA. Well, who wants to be just a hamburger flipper or just a dog walker or just uh, anything? When people ask you about your profession and what you do, I encourage you to, to think about all of the things that keep you engaged and involved in in the pursuit of caring for others. And I encourage you to share that with them. So if someone says, what do you do? Say, I'm a caring nursing assistant and I make the lives of our nation's frail, elder and disabled citizens better on a daily basis. Now that's something that folks might want to participate in. The next thing I'd ask you to think about is this. Have you been part of or have you ever heard someone say, oh man, I could take one look at her and told you she wasn't going to make it. What's the benefit in that? 
Do we so much want to be right that we're willing to be wrong? I mean, because part of the reason that people don't stay in our profession is because the work environment is unpleasant and unwelcoming and unfriendly. And that's not what any of us genuinely wants. I think that sometimes we're driven to make those sorts of comments or participate in that sort of thinking because we don't want to invest the time and energy in the new folks because we're not sure how long they're going to last. How much more powerful might it be for you as an advocate to say, I've got 50 bucks that says she makes it a year. Who wants to bet with me? Isn't that a better way? Isn't that setting the situation up for success as opposed to setting it up for inevitable failure? So it's, it's important to think about that. I also would like to ask you to think about this. What about, what are the things about our profession or pardon me, your profession as nursing assistants that cause you to stay? Um, I can tell you that I was just talking with one of our members of the board of directors and she was telling me, and she's been a nursing assistant for over 30 years, I believe. Um, and she was telling me that the reason she continues to work, even though she's getting older and it is becoming more physically challenging for her. One of the reasons that she continues to do what she does is because she loves older Americans and she gets a real sense of accomplishment and a real sense of, uh, of um, contribution because of the work she's able to do with them. So as an advocate, it's really important for you to think about what motivates you to serve our nation's frail, elder, and disabled citizens, uh, residents, some folks call them neighbors, what causes you to work with this population of people and what causes you to continue to do it over time? And use that as the core of your conversation with potential nursing assistants who are looking at the possibility of coming into this profession. The next thing that I'd like to ask you to think about as an advocate for your profession is to think about what role you might play in the retention process. And retention means that we're keeping people, that they're staying longer, that they're becoming a part of our organization, that they're becoming part of our profession, that they're really building that relationship that will last a lifetime. And so I'd like to ask you to think about that and think about what are some of the things you experienced as a newbie and how did those things make you feel? And if some of those things that you experienced as the new nursing assistant weren't particularly positive, I'd encourage you to avoid those things. Just get them off the table and focus on the positive experiences that you had. And realizing those positive experiences, then move those positive experiences to the new nursing assistants who come into your organization. Also, when it comes to retention, I'd like to ask you to think about this. Each human being has their own unique set of talents, skills, and abilities. Uh, it's, it's possible to say that no two of us are exactly the same when it comes to what we can do, what our talents and our strengths and our abilities are. So as a, an advocate for your profession, doesn't it make a great deal of sense to focus on the talents and skills and abilities that each of the people brings to the table? Um, I remember I worked in a 120-bed skilled nursing facility in southwest Missouri. And I was good at some things, and I was not good at others. I was not good when it came to getting the bed head out of uh, getting the resident's hair combed so that there wasn't that flat spot in the back. Um, I was also not particularly great when it came to doing things like makeup and fingernails and things like that. We did have a member of our team and his name was Randy and he was great at all of those things. 
Now, to be perfectly candid, I didn't always like Randy, but right from the onset, I did recognize his talents. And so on those days when he frustrated me with things that I didn't necessarily like about him, I chose to focus on the things that I expect, respected and admired about him. And because of that, we were able to form a good functional relationship that allowed us to each play our part in the delivery of care. So as advocates, you might want to think about what are the strengths of all of the people around me and how can we put those strengths together to achieve even greater outcomes, one of which would be keeping the really good folks. I'd also encourage you to think about this. We have the opportunity to share the remarkable experience that comes from caring for those who need love and attention and support and assistance. And that is a great place for us to be at. So please think about these things as you're talking with new and potential with new nursing assistants or potential nursing assistants. What's the best of our profession and how can you share that with them? If you can figure those things out, you will help increase the retention of the men and women who come to your care setting to be part of a greater caring community. As we wrap up today's segment, I'd like to share with you this quotation, which actually is, uh, comes from an anonymous source, but I thought it was really cool. Professionalism is not the job you do, it's how you do the job. <laughs>